first off, I want to just do a rudimentary diagram of your house. So envision with me, this is your house. And what we're going to do is we're going to split that house into two parts. The lower part is the principal. These are dollars that you get and you get to spend and enjoy and, and utilize in any way you want. The top part of the line is the interest that would be set aside to take care of the lender. So as we do the reverse mortgage, obviously the lender has to make money. So that portion is going to be reserved for them. It's not that they get it all. It's just reserved for them for interest payments. I'm going to do an example of a 72-year-old with a $200,000 home. And in that example, under just an interest rate assumption that I'm using, the portion that would be available for you is $143,000. Everything above the 143000 would be reserved for interest for the lender to lend you this money. So that's that section for the top of the line. Number five, upper left-hand corner, you'll see is the interest. And interest rates change every week, and so you'd actually have to get a quote to find out exactly what the interest rate would be and exactly how much money would be available. But just bear in mind, there is interest on a reverse mortgage. You're just not paying it until you move, sell, or die. All right, number six is the section below the 143000 That's all the money that's reserved for you. And there's a portion of that that's going to go for cost. You see item seven, lower left-hand corner, would be the loan origination fees, the mortgage insurance premium to FHA and HUD, um, appraisals, credit reports, and all of those types of things would be lumped into item seven. Item eight would be all of your... Um, debts against your current home. So maybe you have a $50,000 line of credit that we need to pay off. And so that would be included in there. So that's all coming out of item six. There's also payments that you would take. Item nine, lower right hand corner, you might be taking monthly installments. Or you might have a credit line and you're taking just chunks of money periodically. But all that money is again money that's available to you. You can choose how you want to receive it. You can take it all at once, you can take the monthly payments, or you can just access it whenever you need it or want it. Item 10 is the interest that would be accruing against any money that you have borrowed, and that would be, again, reserved for the lender. They don't get it right now, but it's reserved for them. And then, what would happen if your home appreciated? Let's say that that $200,000 home appreciated, then there's going to be more money available for you and the lender. There's also a credit line growth if you do, in fact, take the credit line, which is going to guarantee that the portion available to you is going to increase by whatever the current interest rate is. And so that's an increasing option only if you take the credit line growth. At this point, I'd like to stop and just point out a very simple aspect of the reverse mortgage. Many people, there's a big misconception. They think somehow you're giving your house to the lender. That's absolutely not true. Let's say at this point you decided to pay off the reverse mortgage. Either you're going to move, you're going to sell the house, or you've passed away and your heirs are choosing to pay off the reverse mortgage. How much money is owed to the bank? Very simple. The money you have actually taken. So item 7, the grade in part. Item 8, the grade in part. Item 9, any money you personally took. And item 10, the interest that's reserved for the lender. That's all the lender gets. So it's really not as complicated as a lot of people like to think. So just think of this diagram and think in the, the grayed out areas are what the lender gets after this loan gets paid off.